Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Wednesday. Hope everybody had a uh, great day. Uh, we uh, had some improving weather conditions over us and got a little colder today, but still pretty reasonable for this time of year. Delvin, I haven't seen you in a while. I was thinking about you just now because I haven't, uh, you haven't been on. Uh, good to see you here. Um, we are uh, going to uh, move ahead and look at what appears to be a very cold and dynamic pattern that's developing as we move through this weekend and next week and probably beyond that, at least that's the way everything seems to be shaping up on the weather maps today, we still have no clarity on how this is going to play out for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day uh, in the Northeast. Uh, and I'm going to uh, show you the uh, primary differences in the models. It's amazing how you can have the same trough on all three models and with just some, di uh, some uh, maybe slightly more than minor differences, but not major differences, uh, you wind up with different outcomes. And the uh, trend has pretty much stayed the same today. We have the um, European and the Canadian model, I got so desperate this morning to try to get some clarity out of this that I actually looked at the, the last several runs of the Canadian model, and it actually hasn't been doing all that badly. Uh, it's uh, been lined up pretty well with the European. We have those two models on one side, and let's put the UK Met also on the side of the European Canadian uh, with um, the idea that there will be uh, something for Sunday night into Monday morning, Christmas Eve night into Christmas Day. Uh, on the other side of the equation, we've got the GFS, uh, which has nothing. And I think even though the NAM doesn't go quite far enough, at least from what I'm seeing so far of the NAM as it goes into Saturday, it looks like it might want to be in the camp of the GFS. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this all winds up playing out because uh, one of these models is going to have, a, a group of these models is going to have a major fail uh, in the uh, mid-range forecast period. And remember now, we're still at Wednesday night. We're talking about 520 hours from now as to whether there'll be any uh, precipita precipitation or not. But um, you know, usually by now we have a rough idea that something's going to happen. Uh, but in, in this particular instance, we're kind of playing the extremes here with the sub very suppressed GFS and colder GFS and the much more robust European and Canadian models. First off though, let's uh, take a look at what's going on uh, at the moment because we do have some uh, activity going on with winter storm warnings up for parts of the northern plains and uh, up through northern Minnesota. You can see this band of snow that extends from western Wisconsin and this is the radar at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, a band of snow there. This is really kind of marking the boundary line uh, of uh, the uh, slight, with some warmer air to the south and the beginnings of the bitter cold air that's coming down to the north and this area is extending back into uh, uh, Montana as northern Montana is going to wind up getting uh, some uh, 4 to 8, 5 to 10 inch snowfalls out of this as this moisture streaks eastward. We also have some rain in the southeast and this is low pressure a uh, little system in the upper atmosphere and a weak low at the sur at the surface and that is moving pretty much straight east so you can kind of pick out where the how the upper flow is going as it you know rides across california and then rises up into the northern plains and then drops you know into the northeast and then there's a <clears throat> little bit of a dip here in the southeastern part of the united states representing the uh, disturbance that's producing the rain in that particular area so uh, the snows that are up here that's part of a lead system that's going to be coming into the into the northeast on Friday, but uh, we are um, we got to get there first. Now we've been checking the teleconnections every day uh, to uh, look at the indices to see the extreme nature that the atmosphere is has been in, and we still see that uh, based on uh, the overnight model runs we've got the uh, eat that all important most important EPO index strongly negative right up until about January 1st and then it starts to go slightly positive uh, by a little bit uh, the PNA uh, getting that big spike down today spikes up to the neutral line 
as we uh, head to Saturday and then starts to drop again as we move into early next week. And then it goes positive uh, for later next week and into the new year. So that's something we may uh, want to pay attention to. Uh, the NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation, or the Greenland Block is a non-factor at the moment. That is, um, from the standpoint of providing the cold at least, uh, it is going to be uh, strongly positive as we go through the weekend and through next week. So there's no blocking, but again, as we've said many times, you, we don't need blocking to bring cold air into the U.S. or to bring cold air into the eastern part of the United States. It's one way to bring in cold air, but it's not the only way. So let's look at what's happening. And I'm going to bring up for you the uh, GFS and European models uh, for... Um, this weekend and I want to show you the upper airflow and why this is such a problem in terms of the forecast so here we have the GFS and I'm gonna put it here and I'm gonna make the European a little bit bigger so you can kinda of look at them maybe side by side to some degree anyway and let me just let's uh, get this out of the way we'll get this out of the way as well so here you have the uh, GFS and the European and how they handle the uh, trough that, that is swinging down. The uh, strong vortex that's dropping southward out of Canada and rotating around is swinging a trough around. Now, uh, one of the things that's different about the GFS in the, and the European is that the trough, this is for the same time frame, which is Sunday at 7 a.m. The trough on the European is hanging back much further west than it is on the GFS. The GFS has this broader flow from the vortex already pushing into the eastern part of the United States and it's beginning to call it's beginning to show cold air spreading out and overwhelming the, the flow. Whereas the European has a strong upper high sitting right off the east coast of Florida that's keeping the ridge in the east pumped up a little bit longer and it shows this system again uh, further west and that's the big question here because you know how this plays out uh, the European has a much more bullish view with regards to uh, a, a system of along the East Coast on Sunday as does the UCMED and the Canadian whereas the GFS argues and continues to argue now on the third uh, consecutive run and five out of the last six runs that cold air is going to overwhelm and uh, we're not going to have a problem. Any wave development that occurs is going to occur way offshore and not be an issue. So we got to figure out which model's got the better handle of this and unfortunately it won't be until maybe tomorrow that the energy that's involved here uh, comes into play. Uh, it's still over the Pacific so the sampling is limited. Normally the, the European tends to be better in how it handles Pacific systems before they come in, uh, and you know that's done off satellite data. Uh, usually, the uh, the European has had a history of doing handling those systems much better. Doesn't always uh, handle them perfectly. Uh, sometimes the GFS wins out, but the European does have an edge. So this is why you know if you're a fan of the uh, GFS model, you cannot dis you you really can't discount the European yet. Uh, because we still have to wait for that energy to come in. I would suspect that uh, if that is the case, if the European does have the better handle on this, then you will begin to see the GFS adjust, possibly beginning tonight. But if it doesn't do it tonight, I would think it would certainly start to do it if it's going to do it during the day tomorrow. So let me show you how the GFS plays this out uh, in terms of the uh, uh, the weather system that we're, we're dealing with. And here's our map now we're into Thursday and you can see the energy starting to come in across the Great Lakes uh, the models forecasting snow in northern Iowa the southern half of Wisconsin over the most of the state of Michigan except the extreme south with a little arm extending into western New York there's a bit of a warm front here high pressures building up in southeastern Canada so there's a bit of a warm front setting up to our south uh, by uh, tomorrow afternoon the GFS uh, produces some snows in uh, New York State away from the coast uh, up in interior Connecticut to the north and uh, throughout uh, 
into Massachusetts, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Not a big uh, snowmaker. Uh, then it moves to the east, and of course now the warm front is pushing northward. At the same time, you're starting to see colder air dropping south and low pressure moving down into southern Colorado with a little bit of snow there, dry up in the Pacific Northwest. We're now into Saturday, and here's that wave on the GFS moving northeastward up the uh, Appalachians and heading up uh, into New England. A little bit of snow here showing on the back side. Uh, that low moves out. The front moves through, and here's where the model just overwhelms cold air into the east, and the front is way offshore, and there's really no factor here as far as uh, development is concerned. Now, we will go to the European, and I unfortunately can't, as, as we know, with the European, we only have a limited view here in terms of what we can show you with maps uh, only every 24 hours, but I'm going to use the... Um, mean sea level pressure map uh, with the um, anomalies on it because that's about as clean a map as we're going to get and this way we can at least match them up in terms of the low pressure even though, though you won't see the precip. So here we are for Thursday morning on the European and uh, now it's starting you know with that wave and warm front. Uh, European has a, maybe a slightly colder look in the northeast for Friday. Uh, the wave comes up on Saturday and goes by. So at this point on Sunday, you have the front offshore, and then it runs back across uh, the the uh, southeastern Gulf states into low pressure that's back over Texas. And that's significant because if we look at the GFS map for the same time frame, and I'll be this way we can compare head to head, it has high pressure there. Here's our front on the GFS that runs from um, Nova Scotia down to North Florida. The European gets that front hung up across the Carolinas and extends it back into Texas where we have a wave that's developing on it. Uh, we uh, want to look at the, the NAM because the NAM, now the NAM only goes out <clears throat> to uh, 1 a.m. on Sunday at this point, but you can see the front kind of gets hung up here a bit in the southeast but it doesn't extend back into Texas the way the European has it. So uh, that's why I'm thinking the NAM right now is kind of siding with the GFS at least through the time frame that uh, it, 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 it can match up with, which is up until 1 a.m. on uh, Sunday. Now, here's the uh, European again, and now we're going into Monday morning, and there's a low, a 993 low, uh, sitting right near Montauk, on eastern Long Island. Now, the, if this if this is literally correct, it would probably mean uh, some uh, fairly decent snows across uh, the western half of Pennsylvania, uh, on up through much of upstate New York, away from the coast, uh, through much of interior New England, again, away from the coast. But the coastal areas would probably see rain out of this later Sunday into Sunday night. Maybe it changes to snow right before it ends, and that's it. So this is Monday morning on the European. This is Monday morning on the GFS. You see the huge difference here? Uh, the, the, uh, the problem is with, you know, when we look at what the upper airs look like, there's your upper air on the GFS. It has a trough uh, that runs from Lake Superior to about New Jersey. It's, you know, it's, it's not a half bad looking trough here, and it's lifting up and out. The European because it has a little bit more of a western bias it, it does have much more of a kink here you see how the uh, the uh, the heights kind of turn west and then south there's much more of a definable short wave on the uh, european than there is on the gfs gfs is a slightly flatter look to this flow than the european does and i'll put the canadian up here uh, because the canadian actually has a much deeper trough that's accessed from superior down into West Virginia and into the Carolinas. So uh, the, G, the, uh, the Canadian model uh, also has that low, not too far away from where the um, European has it. Although it does kind of a weird thing here. It brings up a wave and then already develops a second wave that comes in Sunday night and then, a, then kind of then either sits it, there, sits it there or maybe just the low reforms a bit uh, as that northern energy gets involved, so I'm not quite sure how it gets to the, it gets to this almost the same place that the European does, but uh, the snow map might match up fairly well 
on the Canadian. So this kind of matches up with what the European has to some degree. And you see how bullish that the uh, Canadian is. And of course, the GFS, uh, with its idea of the flat solution, is uh, not going to show much of anything. This is all from Friday's system, uh, where it's showing some four to six inch snow amounts in upstate New York and up into uh, New England. It looks like I-90 will be the, the uh, southern edge of that heavier snow. Uh, the 24-hour uh, snowfall map so we can just zero in on Friday here and that's the GFS's view uh, for next week so I'm sorry let me go back so let me just look back here there we go so this is Friday <clears throat> with some six inch plus amounts uh, being indicated for Friday into Saturday across uh, much of the interior Northeast and then this is for Sunday and uh, Sunday night into Monday night, uh, which is, you know, basically uh, as a result of just uh, whatever lake effect that's going on. I don't know why it, the upper the upper trough swinging around that it produces some of those uh, scattered one to two inch amounts with a little bit more off the shore, shores of Lake Erie in southwest New York. So, uh, again, a lot of questions still remain and are going to remain for at the very least another 24 hours. Uh, the upper air pattern overall for you winter weather lovers you're going to like this and let me go back to the beginning so we can watch this all evolve here's that the, the upper low that forms in Canada and then swings to the east that vortex rotates around and then eventually you start to get a system that comes into the west and this one looks to be a snow producer late next week uh, in the northeast the european by the way has two events next week after this after whatever happens monday it has a lead piece that comes out from the west on wednesday and has some snow later wednesday wednesday night into early thursday for uh, my area on up uh, to uh, boston uh, it has it's a, a moderate event and then it brings in the whole trough as we move uh, beyond that into Saturday and has, a, has something much more important with a pretty robust Gulf flow coming out uh, for uh, late fri later Friday, Saturday, and it has snows uh, down uh, in, in parts of uh, the Deep South uh, on up uh, into the Mid-Atlantic states and into uh, just getting into the Northeast uh, Friday night into Saturday with a low off the Carolina coast. Now we'll see if that winds up happening in reality. But in terms of the broad pattern, you're still going to maintain a flow out of Canada here uh, with cold air right through the first week of January. So winter is going to be uh, in force here once we get this front through on Saturday and we start to turn colder. So from Christmas Eve right for the net, for the two weeks that follow, the pattern looks very cold and potentially dynamic and uh, potentially quite active. Um, let me go back to the snow amounts and we'll... Uh, punch up uh, for let's go to the Midwest uh, look at your 10-day snowfall here it's fairly robust here some sizable snow amounts being indicated now a lot of this is going to depend on you know what happens later next week so you know this is all uh, a, a huge variable here in terms of snow amounts but you're going to be so deep into the cold air in the upper Midwest regardless of how much snow you get out of this um, the uh, two meter uh, below normal temperatures you can see how pretty widespread it is well this is uh, at the end of next week but uh, I'm gonna go back uh, let's go back to um, let me get those two meter temperatures up so you can follow the freezing line which is where the blue is we'll start with the um, the Midwest here and here comes you start to go we're into Friday now uh, here we go to Saturday now we're here Sunday and you start to get into the below zero temperatures here by Sunday morning coming into Minnesota and then that spreads southward by Monday morning you've got a large area of minus tens into Wisconsin uh, and below zero temperatures minus 20 25 degree temperatures in northwest Minnesota and uh, northeastern North Dakota by Tuesday morning uh, again a repeat performance uh, minus 20 to minus 25 starts to moderate a little bit now and we see this warming going on back through Illinois and Indiana it's because it's trying to push a low up toward the Great Lakes toward the end of next week 
that's a big that's also questionable as well I'm, I'm i'm not sure whether that's going to happen and notice another big push of cold air comes in behind that system that uh, spreads southeastward as we head into the new year miles been very consistent on this uh with regards to the magnitude of this cold air uh, that's being indicated look at these temperatures minus 30 or more uh coming into minnesota uh and through the dakotas uh, minus uh, 15 to 20 uh, in uh, Wisconsin and in through Iowa. So this is really bitter cold air. Uh, by uh, Monday, you've got these temperatures here. Uh, look at this all this huge area of minus 20 degree reading, single digits uh, moving into uh, parts of Ohio and uh, also up through Michigan. So this is a very, very cold dumping of air in, in the long range. Uh, with the uh, northeast temperatures through all of this, and again we'll start at the beginning which of course is not all that cold uh, but here's that you know we're Thursday into Friday now we're gonna warm up with that front approaching and moving through so the freezing line gets here on Monday you know 20s teens and single digits and even below zero in parts of upstate New York Tuesday morning again Wednesday morning very cold teens and low 20s down through uh, New Jersey into Pennsylvania uh, Thursday morning, you've got some uh, minus 10, minus 15s in parts of upstate New York, Vermont, and northern New Hampshire. Uh, teens for lows uh, down in southern New England and, and back over in my area. Now here's the system now that it's, the GFS at least wants to take up to our west uh, and, the, and the European wants to take to our south. And then another dump of cold air as we move into the new year that comes in uh, single digits all over the place uh, as we move into... Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of the first week of January, just really brutally cold air uh, moving into the northeastern part of the country uh, in, uh, in that particular time frame. Okay, so uh, let's uh, really uh, take a quick look at what's going on in Europe. And we're going to do the precip for you guys. Because we've been looking at the fact that maybe next week it's going to get cold up in England and Ireland again got low pressure going by on Tuesday uh, into the North Sea that brings a little bit of cold air in another one that follows uh, models seem to have backed off a little bit on the extent of the cold you've got a southerly flow there in the long range so it doesn't look as robust with the cold weather uh, in Europe later next in Europe and particularly up in England and Ireland for later next week it looks like the models have warmed just a little bit uh, in uh, that part of the world and for our friends in southeastern Canada, we, of course, do not want to forget you guys because I know you like to look and see what's going on for Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. So we'll ride that along from the beginning. As a storm pulls away at the moment, uh, we've got our Friday-Saturday system in the east that tracks west of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia for the most part. And then as we start to get into that colder air next week, um, looks like a couple of chances for snow there around uh, Tuesday Wednesday uh, for Nova for for Newfoundland and it kind of stalls this low out here out to the east of you uh, as we move into the latter part of next week and then here's some more so you're gonna have plenty of action too uh, going forward very very interesting and dynamic weather pattern definitely shaping up uh, in the long term but uh, again with regards to uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day uh, particularly Christmas Eve night into the morning of Christmas Day for the Northeast. Uh, a lot of questions remain. And um, it's going to, I really would like to see the models at least cinch up, lock up into some sort of continuity so that this way uh, I can focus on, you know, who's going to get the snow and how much. Because we can't really answer that question until we know for sure that something's going to happen. So a big hello to everybody that's on tonight. We've got a lot of folks here, and uh, that's always good to see. Uh, Climate Prediction Center uh, indicating above average precip temperatures below average in southern areas of the northeast. Danilo uh, Yakubov, yes, that is definitely the case given the upper pattern uh, that we're, we're seeing there. Um, Ruin Nation, I thought... A low a day or two ago for the east only in northeast had a chance well maybe not I mean I'm not sure what you're referring to if you're talking about a white Christmas um, 
not sure. Euro model indicating a bunch of storms in the next week or two. That's very much correct. And everything is okay with me. Uh, Abby Robinson, thank you for asking. Uh, it's all good. Um, I'm just running through everybody to make sure you got questions. Uh, Fallen Angel, you like anomalies? I'll try to do them more often, especially when, you know, certainly when they were, they're very relevant, I will do that. Casho82, thank you for hitting Super Chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Cup of coffee for me right after I'm done. Um, let me just uh, type a big thank you to you. And it's very much appreciated at any time. I really, uh, I really uh, in, enjoy doing all these uh, live videos. And you know, if it gives me a chance to grab a coffee or a cigar, I'm, 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 I'm very happy. Um, let's see, Joshua Pan. Uh, where you go? Oh, there, where'd you go? Hang on. I would think there's probably some better way to access climatological data through code, but if you want to manual access data, you can just Google. All right, I will. Uh, I will do that. Um, I'll make a notation of it. Thank you for that information. Let me just uh, trying to scroll this down. Sometimes is very difficult. Anthony Orr. <laughs> Uh, is it fair to say the coldest air initially will stay away from the U.S. East Coast until the system comes through late in the week? Yes, I think that's pretty fair. You know, uh, the first air mass that's coming down is going to modify some because the vortex as it lifts up is going to weaken a little bit and then re-strengthen as it rotates around. So uh, the air mass does modify uh, somewhat as it moves into the east, but it's still going to be pretty cold uh, uh, much of all of next week. Uh, then after that, after the system, if it's if the models are correct, and, and there's probably a, a, a higher confidence in the system for the end of next week, if only because of the fact that all three models have had that since yesterday. They've kind of, you know, they, they popped it all up at the same time, and they, all three of them, the Canadian, the European, the GFS, all have this system for late next week. Uh, the question is whether there's something in the middle of the week because the European wants to break a piece out ahead. The GFS has that as well, but it's much weaker with it. You know, sometimes models overdo uh, a lead system that kicks out and they underdo the system that follows. So uh, we're going to watch that trend and see whether that's the case or not. Uh, the European has been showing this system uh, coming in for the middle of next week. Uh, overnight it did it and I think it did it yesterday it, it, it hinted at it and uh, you know the other models have been kind of there but they're they're showing a much weaker system for the lead one for later next week uh, is it fair that the cold okay uh, one inch on the ground in Boston on Christmas well Tom Adams if you can get this low to develop if the European is correct it actually I think what would be ideal for you snow lovers okay what you really want to see is both models be right you want the European, you want the GFS to be right in that it's bringing in more cold air than the European is, but not as overwhelming as it shows. And you want the European right where it hangs back enough of that trough so that you're going to get a wave to develop. And the, um, the model that actually does the compromise of the two is the UK Met. Uh, the UK Met, the British model. Uh, has a wave where the uh, European wants to take a wave, and I saw the in-between spot, so it kind of takes that wave up uh, into southern West Virginia, redevelops it off the, the uh, Delaware coast, and then rides it just along the coast on up to the northeast. The Uke Met uh, is a great compromise between the two because it has the low, the primary low in northeastern Georgia, and then shoots it up uh, north northeastward from there to just southeast of Cape Cod. So the the UCMET suggests that there will be a it'll be a colder surface than the European has, and the European's kind of borderline as it is. So the European's not that far off from maybe bringing snows to places like Philadelphia, New York City, and Boston. Right now, it would be north and west of there, but the UCMET would suggest that the colder air would be a little more important, and at the same time, not quite as overwhelming of the cold air that the GFS shows. So that's what you want. You want that, that UCMET compromise uh, if you are a snow lover. Uh, that will bring you uh, your inch of snow at least um, for Boston. 
Uh, is rain going to be bad for Manhattan on Friday? No. Fast answer. There's not going to be. There's going to be some light rain, patchy light rain around on Friday, but it's not going to be anything that's going to cause you any problems. And I think much of the day may wind up being cloudy, but it'll probably be uh, dry. Um, Jimmy Hayden is skiing at Blue Knob near Altoona on Saturday. Rain changing to snow. You might change over to snow at the end, but you know, I don't think it's going to be. Uh, enough to bring you anything there uh, from this first wave going up the way I'm looking at it uh, Sebastian P left Destin Florida heading for Raleigh North Carolina uh, made it to Lake Marion South Carolina 95 flooded in spots very dangerous road conditions in central South Carolina thanks for sharing that we have um, you know on the radars I showed you earlier that's that system that's moving across the southeast uh, that developed in the western um, western gulf Ryan Ford, being that there's no full block to hold the cold, the cold air in place, could that be a result in the moderating temperatures? Well, the way the model has uh, the models have this, it actually spreads high pressure all across southern Canada, and that will keep it cold here, especially at the bottom. You know, we're talking at the very bottom of the atmosphere is going to be very cold uh, through much of next week, even though there's no block. Uh, you do have that vortex not moving. So the surface high pressure is not going to be able, part of it may try and move out, but for the most part, it's going to try and hold as the vortex rotates around. So this is why blocking sometimes is not the most important factor to look at. Um, we, you know, the, the enormity of this cold air and as strong high pressure spreads out, I mean, you're going to have pressures up in eastern Canada, Canada on the order of uh, 1045, 1050 millibars. Now, that's pretty strong. So if the high can get in the right spot and just hold its own long enough, uh, you uh, will hold the cold air in into the northeast and maybe even down uh, into the uh, mid-Atlantic states. At least that's what the model is, in, the European is implying. The GFS, uh, less the case because it wants to take a track much more to the west. Uh, I would just say that, you know, given the kind of uh, the way weather systems have be, been behaving uh, so far, uh, this winter we haven't seen any you know real Great Lakes cutter storms so you you have to ask yourself given the upper air pattern the way it is whether you're going to suddenly start seeing it now uh, I think the better bet might be that you wind up with something that's flatter a little little flatter a little weaker and tracks a, a bit further to the south I think that's where I would kind of lean in terms of uh, what the law what it may do in the long range um, Austin Belkoski with models all differing on solutions to be possible to end up with a huge storm. If you're talking about the one for Christmas Eve night into Christmas Day, I would say no. I wouldn't call it a huge storm. You know, you could wind up with a, a pretty decent wave with a pretty decent amount of moisture that uh, would produce some moderate snowfalls given, you know, depending on, on, on how things track out. But remember, you, you got to have, this is one of those situations where, you know, it's a delicate balance. If, if you have too much cold air overwhelming because the jet stream is spreading out uh, from uh, where it is, uh, you're going to suppress everything to the south and east. If you don't have enough of that happening, then you're going to want to, then you're going to have a stronger ridge pushing back uh, out from the Atlantic, and that's going to set up your boundary zone further north and west, making it warmer for the coast. So it, it's, a, it's a double edged sword. You've got to straddle a very fine line. Uh, in, in order to get that snow for the coast here. But I think it's doable given the situation that we have. We just have to resolve, uh, is something going to happen? Okay, does, does and, and, and again, <clears throat> we have the models basically on two extremes. It's not an either or situation. We could certainly wind up with a compromise between the two like the uke bed uh, is showing. Uh, Joe uh, Hooper, it's Upper New York. Do you think they will get much rain on Saturday? It'll be mostly snow. Looking at Old Forge and Tug Hill. Oh, good old Tug Hill. Uh, give me one second. I'm going to just punch the map up off screen here, uh, so I can do it faster. And they're loading up. You know, you're going to have your snow on Friday. Uh, you you know you're you're going to have a much of New York State will be in rain on Saturday until it changes back to snow Saturday evening before it ends. And again, after that, uh, if the European is right, you will wind up with a sizable amount of snow uh, Sunday night into Monday up uh, up in your area. 
Um, 60 below in Siberia. Yeah, this is really super cold air. This is not uh, your ordinary Canadian cold air that we're talking about here. This is super cold air. Uh, cash 82. Um, no, you, uh, the um, Yukmet is not on on there, but let me get you, get you a link so where you could look at it. And these are the four panel Yukmets. You know, I really wish that they would come up with better graphics at these uh, these um, government weather websites uh, in Europe because you know these color maps are all we have and they, they, they have very little detail we can only guess at things uh, when we see this sort of stuff but uh, here you go Cash82 um, and for everybody else if you want to see what the uke met looks like and just make sure you click on the tab where you can pick out between the 0z run and uh, the 12z run thump versus north korea trump versus north korea uh canada canadian mile best one uh, joe if you won't uh, monster storm canada well you know i gotta tell you i've been watching the canadian i admit it i've been looking at the canadian um i've been watching the canadian model uh, for a few days this week and from the storms from last week it actually did a pretty decent job with them so um you know maybe it's credibility level right now it seems to be working so the the fact that it's kind of lined up with the European certainly gives the European some support in what it's what it is uh, forecasting. But all you snow lovers there should be rooting for the Uke bet because that would be um, a, a best case uh, scenario. James Nascar, you're worried about an ice storm on Long Island. That's not going to happen. Uh, this is right now. This is you know this is a, you know this is rain to snow. This is not going to be any kind of ice storm situation uh, at all uh, with regards to what's happening for Sunday night and Monday. Caller Turkey, snow amount, uh, rain amounts for uh, the weekend. Let me see. Uh, at least through, yeah, for the weekend, most of the rainfall amounts look to fall between, in upstate New York, there'll be pockets of uh, one to two inches um, most of upstate New York will probably get at least a half an inch of rain, and there will be some pockets of one to two inches across um, the Catskills, uh, up the upper Hudson Valley, uh, into north central New York, and then up into parts of the Adirondacks. If you're looking at the rainfall amount for New England, uh, there will be some pockets of some two inch amounts in northern Connecticut and through Massachusetts and southern Vermont and New Hampshire uh, with this, and even into uh, southeastern Maine. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that's that's where you're talking. So if, if the area is different, let me know. Uh, the system on the 27th, 99 wolves shows up on the European. That looks like a, you know, the European would argue for a three to six inch type system. Uh, looking uh, f uh, from what I saw on the maps from earlier, from what I can remember. You know what, I, I, can, I, can, I can't show them to you. I wish I could. Um, but give me one second, because this way I don't want to, I don't want to quote off of memory, because my memory doesn't always work very well. But I did show them to someone else, so I do have them in front of me, that I can see. Okay, so um, for Wednesday, if the European is correct for later Wednesday into Thursday, it would have th uh, uh, an area of three to six inches from northeastern Maryland, Delaware, uh, all of New Jersey. Most of eastern and northern uh, eastern Pennsylvania and the northern half of Pennsylvania um, into southern New York State, just north of the PA border, uh, all of southeastern New York, Long Island, Connecticut, the southern half of Massachusetts and Rhode Island in a three to six inch. It actually even uh, shows a stripe of six inch plus snows, uh, a narrow band, New York City and Long Island. That is for... Um, uh, for Wednesday night into early Thursday, if that works. And then the second system, now this is the Europeans for Friday night into Saturday. So for some areas, it's just starting. So in areas from southern New England uh, down to uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, you basically is a one to six inch band. Southern New Jersey, six plus, that goes back toward uh, much of northeastern Maryland, all of Delaware. And then you started to get into the 9 to 12s as you move uh, across parts of Delmarva, back west across Virginia, northern North Carolina, uh, into uh, western Virginia, southern West Virginia, and eastern Kentucky. And the model of the European is even showing some one-foot, you know, 12 to 18 amounts 
uh, from this system. But this is so long range, folks. You know, really, uh, salt mine worth of salt here in terms of um, what you might expect uh, with that. So I would not put, uh, you know, as we know with these snow maps, we cannot uh, put a whole lot of faith into these things uh, in the um, in the long range. All right, folks. So look, let's call it a night here. We had a pretty good discussion. Uh, glad to uh, that everybody was here. Uh, if you are uh, interested, I just want to put this up with Christmas coming. Uh, you want to get a gift for the weather geek in your life? You might be able to still uh, do it and um, get it del delivered in time. So if you are interested, you can check out you know some. Um, mugs and shirts and sweatshirts and so on on the uh, Joe Stradamus store um, th that I have um, no obligation obviously but I'm just putting it out there and uh, Facebook live tonight at 915 if you're on my Facebook page meteorologist Joe Chaffee uh, we will have the uh, Joe Rayo Joe Chaffee show which we've been doing every night this week uh, and uh, that is going to be roughly starting at about 9.15 Eastern Time, so we can go over a few other things that we will be able to look at uh, between now and then. Uh, and uh, in, in the meantime, folks, get your Christmas shopping uh, all done uh, tomorrow, and uh, tomorrow because the weather's going to be pretty good pretty much everywhere in the Northeast, except for where there's some lake effect going on. And then, of course, weather conditions deteriorate after that. So, Keep your fingers crossed that we get some resolution on this one way or another because uh, my hair is going to get grayer if we don't have this thing figured out uh, soon. It's just been very frustrating uh, having to deal with all these variabilities and there's still pretty wide variabilities uh, even now that we're inside the five-day range. And it shows you, again, another example when you've got these atmospheric teleconnections stretched out to extremes, just how difficult um, forecasting is with these models just reacting in all sorts of ways uh, in uh, both directions. So let's let's hope that maybe the next couple of model runs finally settles this question once and for all about whether there will be a weather event or not. And then once we get that question settled, we can figure out how much of it is going to be rain and how much of it is going to be snow. All right, good night, everybody. See you on Facebook at 9.15. Otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock.